Okay, that's enough theory and waffle. I'm going to get on with the mod now. I'm going to mount the magnet onto the top of the aluminium pin, your non-magnetic non pin. A little tip, my magnet is smaller in diameter than the pin head is. I want to be able to see that I'm centered properly, so I'm putting the magnet on top of the pin. If the pin was slightly smaller than the magnet, I'd put the magnet on the table and lower the pin onto the magnet again so I could see that the smaller part is centered on the larger one. Okay, tiny drop of super glue. Magnet held on a piece of super glue. I can see all around it and I can change my glasses so I can see what the hell's going on. Bring this down dead center. Just a moment to adjust it and hold it there. Hopefully, I've got that centered on the pin. Give that about 10 seconds. Okay, having a good look at that all round. That's pretty well centered and certainly centered enough for our purposes. Isn't it? About half a millimeter, if that, all around the uh, magnet. I'll leave that to dry. I'll do the other one, and then we'll go on to mounting the sensor. Okay, this part is probably going to suffer from a little bit of lack of focus, but the magnet on its mounting pin is going to go into the end of this axis of the elevator and when I offer it up to the pole that it's actually already there it's very small it's too small for the pin to go in so we have a little bit of drilling work and I'm sorry I didn't cover this on the tools but actually it's relevant to put it in here because you need a drill it is the size of your pin shank or slightly smaller it needs to be a push fit so that later when you twist this around to get the polarity of the magnet where you want it when you move it around it stays there when you uh, when you take your fingers away so a drill just big enough and probably a low power drill like a portable battery one delicate operation i'm going to do that now We'll come back to pushing this back into the pin and aligning it properly. And pushing it back into the axis and aligning it properly. To drill the hole in the end of the axis, you need to raise the ball board that's in the slot. It comes up and you raise it up without taking it right the way out. Take it up high enough for you to be able to get the drill into the end of the axis. Now this plastic post. I have not been able to find any purpose for it, it's probably an alternative part of the design. So, th so this plastic post here, I have not been able to find any purpose for it. If it's in the way, I said you could even touch it out. But as long as you can get to the end of the axis, it's a tricky job getting it up high enough to clear that post and get your drill in. It can be done, but you may want to cut this post off, but drill just enough length for the shank very gently and then while you've got it out you may as well mount this into the axis push it down firmly and align it so that the dot is across this direction here so you've got the neutral point pointing outwards towards where the sensor will be but i now have the magnet oops the magnet mounted in that axis and you probably can't see but I've left a two millimeter gap between the magnet never mind the pin but the bottom of the magnet and the plastic so it's a little, little two millimeter gap here that is so that this, sits, this magnet sits out far enough to be sitting under the uh, sensor head when we mount that and that's what we're going to look at next Let's look now at how we mount the 
whole sensor. This little baby here, if you recall, one face has the vertical edges chamfered, that's the detecting face. The other face is simply flat across. We're looking at mounting so we can detect on the chamfered edge of face. We take our sensor and we take the mounting board or the mounting moulding which used to have the board on it and you can see here that what I've done is I've mounted the device detecting face downward. Now what I've had to do, and you'll have to do with a sharp knife, you need to cut out this piece of the wall, this hole here, okay? You need to do that because A, the sensor won't be close enough to the magnet which is going to sit underneath it. Magnet will sit here, edge on to the sensor and will rotate as you spin the axis it will rotate in front of the device. And he drops a pin. Okay, a point to note about the pins which have been bent up is that they are bent up just where this hole starts. And to bend them, you just need to estimate that distance back how far you need to bend them. Grip the device away from the package and bend up against the pliers. Don't try to bend in any way that might put pressure on the plastic moulding in the joint. Then, to locate the device, you put it face down into the hole that you cut out of the moulding. You can see it just drops into the gap because it's laying on the pins, not on the plastic body. And then you press down your little sausage of blue tack to hold the pins in place. Finally, we're going to remount the potentiometer board that we took off, having removed the plastic block that sat on top which the joystick probe went into. We push that down on top of the device, make sure the slider is over the device itself, and then tighten the end screw to hold the board down. Just remember to slide the clip round. Like so. And like so. This gives us a nice firm assembly for our device. As long as that slide is over the top of the device, we're fine. And that's the mounting assembly for the hall sensor. So we now offer up that assembly. Put it onto its mounting post, the one that originally came off. And have a good look from each end. Keep each end up. Have a look underneath, do it from both ends, just to satisfy yourself that the magnet is actually sitting underneath the face of the device. In terms of movement this way, you can always ease that pin in and out, get it where you want it to be. When you're satisfied with that, put the two fixing screws back in, which I'll do now, and we'll come back and have a look at that. Okay, I've now remounted the um, assembly using the two screws. Be careful with these screws, it's very easy to strip the thread in the posts they go into. Now you can see where, on your own assembly, you can see where the device is, the hall sensor, and you have to simply move this assembly 
left to right. To make sure that the sensor is directly over the center of the magnet, in effect, in effect, in line with the shaft that the pen you mounted on. You want it all to be centered up. No point in me trying to show you too much detail here. You have to use your eyes in a good light and make sure the sensor is directly over the center of the magnet disc. Okay, we're ready now to be soldering these wires back on or onto the leads of the sensor. Take care, in my case positive was red, ground was zero and blue, uh, sorry ground was white and blue was the uh, output signal. Solder those on, try to provide, put as little heat as possible onto the pins of the device and if you have a second pair of hands available get them to hold the pointed nose pliers on the lead you're soldering to so that the heat doesn't travel all the way up the pin to the plastic package it acts as a heat sink. So solder those on and then we should be ready after a bit of tidying up to test the result. Well, the wires have been soldered on, taking the wires away and I'll just pin them down with a proper blue tack to keep everything nice and tidy. I've added a piece of blue tack at the back here because on mine the uh, screw threads have wanted stripped for these two screws. They don't grip very tightly and I've jammed some blue tack into the hole at the back there. I may still need to move this hole so be sideways slightly to centre it. But we're going to look at that next. I'm now going to bravely plug it in and see how it looks in the Windows uh, calibrator. Okay, done that now. And I've also modified the aileron module exactly the same way. I tried taking screenshots of the um, calibrator, but then of course it wouldn't mean anything unless you could see the stick moving. So I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to operate the stick and describe what I'm seeing in the calibrator. I didn't get a perfect result, but I've got a very much improved one. So if you remember, the aileron action before would get to about here. And that would be the end of the output signal. So you're working with just this angle for sensitivity. It now goes just short, just that last little bit. So you've got control over that range, just missing over, sorry, over that range, just missing the last little bit. It's the same the other side, comes all the way over, just misses just misses this last this last little bit but for the rest of it you've got control over that range virtually the entire range it's the same with the elevator again not a perfect result on the aileron by the way I put a plastic shim under the mounting module for the sensor just to move it slightly further away from the magnet to give me slightly better response to movement okay so I take this all the way forward okay it's there, you don't get that part. So you've got that range right to there, just that very last little part isn't giving you anything more. The same, same back here, this last little bit isn't giving you anything more. You've now got virtually the entire range of the stitch work, instead of, as it was before, just about that much. That really concludes the mod.